configure WPI2 Enterprise Wireless LAN on Wireless LAN Controller, addressing table R1, this router to subinterfaces on gigabit 000 here, gigabit 000, uh, a switch, this switch, lightweight access point, this wireless LAN controller, this radius SNMP server, this uh, server placed on this interface, gigabit 001, gigabit 001 on the router, admin PC, here. Create a new wireless LAN. Create a new VLAN interface. Each wireless LAN requires a virtual interface on the wireless LAN controller. These interfaces are known as dynamic interfaces. The virtual interface is assigned at a VLAN ID and traffic that uses the interface will be tagged as VLAN traffic. This is why connections between access points, the wireless LAN controller, and the router are over trunk ports. For the traffic for multiple wireless LANs to be transported through the network, traffic for wireless LAN VLANs must be trunked. Open the browser and desktop admin PC Connect the IP address of the wireless LAN controller over HTTPS. Admin web browser HTTPS column slash slash and use the IP address of the wireless LAN controller 200.254. This 200.254. When I do and sixty eight two hundred two fifty four enter very good username admin password Cisco one two three K sensitive login admin Cisco one two three login Click the controller menu and then click interfaces. Click here controller and in click interfaces. You will see that the default virtual interface and the management interface to which you are connected. Okay. The management interface you are connected to management interface 200.254 this and this is the default virtual interface um, new click here new enter the name of the new interface Wireless LAN dash five W LAN dash five VLAN ID is five five for VLAN ID. This is the VLAN that will carry traffic for the wireless LAN that we create later. Apply, apply. Configure the interface to use physical port number one. Multiple VLAN interfaces can use the same physical port because the physical interfaces are like dedicated trunk ports. Physical information port number, choose port number one. Address the interface as follows IP address 5.254 netmask 24 gateway 5.5.1 .5 .5 
primary DHCP server 5.1. Use the DHCP server configured on the router because router has that IP address 5.1. When I do 5.1 primary DHCP server 5.1 user traffic for the wireless LAN that uses this VLAN interface will be on 192.168.5.0.24 network. The default gateway is the address of an interface on router R1. A DHCP pool has been configured on the router. The address that we configure here for DHCP tells the wireless LAN controller to forward all DHCP requests that it receives from hosts on the wireless LAN to the DHCP server on the router. Apply. OK. Apply. OK. Configure wireless LAN controller to use radio server. WPA2 Enterprise uses an external radio server to authenticate wireless LAN users. Individual user accounts with unique usernames and passwords can be configured on the radio server. Before the wireless LAN controller can use the services of the radio server, the wireless LAN controller must be configured with the server address. Click security on wireless LAN controller. Click here. New. New. Enter the IP address of the radio server. 172.31.1.254 This server one seventy two thirty one one two fifty four. The radio server will authenticate the wireless LAN controller before it will allow the wireless LAN control to access the user account information that is on the server. This requires a shared secret value. Use Cisco 123K sensitive, then apply. Cisco 123, confirm. Cisco 123, apply. Okay, this is it is not a good practice to reuse passwords. This activity reuses passwords only to make the activity easier for you to complete and review. Create a new wireless LAN. Create a new wireless LAN. Use the newly created VLAN interface for the new wireless LAN. Wireless LAN entry in the minibar here. And create new, go. Profile name, uh, floor to employees. Okay, sensitive. SSID dash five. SSID dash five for the network name. ID to five. Host will need to use this SSID to join the network. When you are done, apply to accept your settings. Okay, uh, and also ID is only a label. 
you don't need to match the number of the belong, but can be useful if you will use five. Apply. The ID is an arbitrary value that is used as a label for the wireless LAN. In this case, we configure it as five to be consistent with the VLAN for the wireless LAN. It could be any available value. Apply, already apply it. Wireless LAN has been created. You can configure features of the network. Enable make the wireless LAN functional. It is a common mistake to accidentally skip this step. Okay, enable, don't forget that. VLAN interface that will be used for the new wireless LAN. The wireless LAN controller will use this interface for use traffic on the network. Select the interface that we created in step one. Wireless LAN dash five interface. Here, wireless LAN dash five. Advanced top down here. Flex connect section of the interface. Flex connect. Enable flex connect local switching and flex connect local authentication. Here and here. Apply. Configure wireless LAN security. Instead of WPA2 pre-shared key, PSK, we will configure the new wireless LAN to use WPA2 Enterprise. Click the wireless LAN ID of the newly created wireless LAN to continue configuring it if necessary. Okay, apply, okay. Okay, go to uh, go to wireless LANs. Okay, you can click here on security, but also wireless LANs. Click here on the wireless LAN ID. Click here and go to security. Layer 2, WPA2 plus WPA2. Layer 2, WPA and WPA2. Enable WPA2 policy. Not WPA policy. Enable only WPA2 policy. Click AO2.1x Authentication Key Management Authentication Key Management enable AO2.1x This tells the wireless LAN controllers to use AO2.1x protocol AAA servers here Click here and select the radio server previously configure it in a step two. Apply. Okay. Configure the HCP scope and SNMP. Configure a DHCP scope the wireless LAN controller offers its own internal DHCP server. Cisco recommends that the wireless LAN DHCP server not be used for high volume DHCP services. 
such as that required by larger users on wireless LANs. However, in smaller networks, the DHCP server can be used to provide IP addresses to lightweight access points that are connected to the wireless management network. We will configure a DHCP scope of the wireless LAN controller and use to address lightweight access point one. Okay, uh, connect to wireless LAN controller graphical using interface from admin PC. Okay, this interface. Controller interfaces. Controller interfaces. What interfaces are present? Wireless LAN 5 management and default virtual interface click management record its addressing information here ip netmask gateway dhcp server ip netmask gateway dhcp server We want the wireless LAN controller to use its own DHCP server to provide addressing to devices on the wireless management network, such as lightweight access points. For this reason, enter the IP address of the wireless LAN management interface as the primary DHCP server address. Apply OK. Okay, this same IP address will be the same DHCP server. Click here, internal DHCP server, DHCP scope, new, new. Choose the name Wired Management. Wired management case sensitive. Apply. You will configure the this DHCP scope to provide addresses to the wired infrastructure network that connects the admin PC wireless LAN controller one and lightweight access point one. This this and this apply okay very good and uh, just apply it click the new scope in the dhcp click here the new wired management okay pull starts to address 200.240 and ends 200.249 Enable Enable Network net mask okay the net mask for management this is the management interface 200 this is 24. And the network is 192.168.200.0. The network is, the subnet mask is 24, this. The fault routes. 192.168.200.1 the router this is 200.1 the router this interface gigabit 000 apply
the internal DHCP server will now provide the address to lightweight access point one this when lightweight access point one has its IP address the CAPWAP channel will be established and lightweight access point one will be able to provide access to the floor to employees SSID 5 wireless LAN. If you move the mouse over lightweight access point one in the topology, you should see its IP address, the status of the CAPWAP tunnel and the wireless LAN that lightweight access point one is providing access to. Now it has an IP address 192.168.200.240, the first IP on the DHCP pool, and CAP WAP status connected, and CAP WAP status connected to 192.168.200.254. That is the wireless LAN controller. This this and also providing wireless LANs floor to employers SSID-5 configure SNMP click the management menu in the wireless LAN controller graphical user interface and expand the entry for simple network management protocol management here SNMP trap receivers new community string as WLAN SNMP underscore SNMP case sensitive and the IP address of this server. This server is this 172.31.1.254 because it's the radio server and also the SNMP server. So use this IP address 172.31.1.254. Enable apply. Connect hosts to the network. Configure host to connect the enterprise network. PC uh, in the packet tracer PC wireless client APP. You must configure wireless LAN profile in order to attach to a WPA2 enterprise wireless LAN wireless host. PC wireless. Go to profiles. A new profile. Use this name WLC net space net. Where is run controller space net? Okay. Advanced setup here. Verify that the SSID for the wireless LAN is present and then click Next. Wireless host should see SSID-5. Okay, choose uh, Infrac Secure Mode. And wireless network name is SSID-5. If it does not Move the mouse over lightweight access point one to verify that it is communicating with the wireless LAN controller. Okay, SSID dash five, very good. Infrastructure mode next. 
DHCP for IP addressing on this host. Next. Security WPA2 Enterprise. Okay, WPA2. Next. Username, user1 and password, user1 pass. User1. User1. Okay, case sensitive, user1 pass. Next. Save. Congratulations. Connect to the network. Connect to network. And wait a moment. And you you will see the connection between wireless host and lightweight access point one. Success. Successfully connected. After a brief delay, you should see the wireless host connect to lightweight access point one. Confirm that that wireless host has connected to wireless LAN. Okay, close this, go to IP configuration. Wireless host should receive an IP address from the DHCP server that is configured for hosts on R1. The address will be in the 182.168.5.0.24 network. Okay, look at this DHCP 5.3. 5.3.24.5.1, no DNS server. Open command prompt. We close this command prompt. Verify IP address, IP config. Very good. What network should the address be in? Explain. The address should be in the 182.168.5.0.24 network. The interface was configured to get its IP address from, from 182.168.5.1. That is the router subinterface address for VLAN 5. DHCP is running on the router to provide addresses to wireless hosts. Ping the default gateway, ping this 5.1 from wireless host ping this interface on router R1. Success. Switch one. Switch one uses this IP 200, 100, 200, 100. Success, repeat. Success. Radio server, 172, 31, 1, 254. Success. The radio server uses a dual authentication mechanism. What two things are authenticated by the radio server? Why do you think this is necessary? The radio server authenticates both the wireless LAN controller and the wireless host. The wireless LAN controller makes the authentication request on behalf of the wireless host. It is necessary to authenticate the wireless LAN controller because it is important to protect the radio server tables of usernames and passwords from, from intrusions by unauthorized devices. This is why a shared secret is required during the configuration of wireless LAN controller to use the radio server. What are the advantages of WPA2 Enterprise over WPA2? Pre-shared key, PSK. WPA2 pre-shared key PSK requires all hosts to use the same password. 
In addition, a username is not required. This means that it is more difficult to monitor when users connect and log out of the network. In addition, because so many hosts are using the same password, it is easier for the threat actor to steal the password and gain access to the network. Finally, if the pre-shared key PSK password needs to be changed, all users, all users must be informed of the new password. This also creates a higher probability that the password will be stolen. WPA2 Enterprise using Radius allows for creation and administration of multiple unique user accounts. User behavior can easily be audited from the logs skipped by the Radius server. In addition, users can easily be deleted or added as staffing in the enterprise changes. 100% thank you, thank you very much.